Stand back, folks. Today, I'm doing science. Warning, this video depicts the handling of potentially dangerous chemicals and mixtures. This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only, and is not intended to be an instructional or tutorial. Do not attempt to replicate what you see at home. If you choose to ignore this warning, I am not responsible for your actions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my workshop, and by workshop I mean a corner in my parents' basement. Don't judge me. Today we're going to be doing some science, something a little bit different from our usual rigor. Recently, one of my favorite YouTubers, Elemental Maker, uploaded a video uh, answering the question, what would happen if you made black powder using different sources of carbon? Traditional recipe uses charcoal. He also tried it using activated charcoal and graphite as well. The results were pretty interesting. It's pretty cool to see what he did. And I started wondering, what would happen if you made black powder using different oxidizers. The traditional oxidizer is a potassium-based oxidizer. Now, uh, just to comply with YouTube guidelines, I'm going to be keeping things a little bit vague. Don't want this to be too much of an instructional video. Uh, so I'm going to keep keeping things a little bit on the vague side, not going to be delving into too much detail, uh, just enough to for you guys to get the scientific gist of what I'm doing. So the traditional recipe is a potassium-based oxidizer. Uh, sulfur and charcoal. So I've come up with a couple of different, different recipes determined in different ways. Uh, this is the traditional one right here. And then I did some research online and you can use a sodium based oxidizer in the same ratio. And there's a potassium chlorine based oxidizer. There are two of these that exist. This is, I'm using the one that has four oxygen atoms instead of the three. And this is a stoichiometric ratio based on this right up here. And then also using an ammonium-based oxidizer. This formula I found online, uh, I can't remember the exact name of it, but it was one of the early forms of smokeless powder. And I thought, well, rather than reinvent the wheel, I'll just use that recipe. And then we have a calcium-based oxidizer, which is the same, uh, which again is a stoichiometric ratio based on this up here. And these ones right here, they use a plus 4% binder. The reason it's plus 4% and not included with the rest of this is because there's a bit of an afterthought when I had some difficulty granulating them. This one has zero because when I added the alcohol to granulate it, it turned into a sludge, which is actually still drying as I'm speaking. It's been drying for a couple days now. I actually put it in the oven to heat it up a bit. Not too hot, like 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's not going to burst into flames. Uh, but it's actually getting pretty hard, so I don't think I'm going to need a binder to granulate it. So how did I make it? I'll go into the process just for scientific reasons so you guys know how the experiment uh, parameters were set up. So the ingredients, they were weighed out. I wonder what this tastes like. It, like, it's not salty. It's almost like a electric, sort of stingy taste. They were then ball milled each for about two and a half, two hours. They were then granulated and dried. And now all that's left to do is to test them. Uh, ultimately, I plan to load them into some bullets and actually shoot them. Although I'm thinking about different ways to measure their power. So I'm either going to buy a chronograph, which would be about $90, eh, you know, or I'm going to just maybe get like some phone books and shoot into them and see how deep they go. That may be a bit unreliable. The chronograph would obviously be the best way to do it scientifically, but I want to know if I should actually spend the 90 bucks on it. Considering I don't think I have enough of a subscriber race, that one's going to be able to appreciate the money that I've already spent on this product project. The testing platform is going to be this piece of wood with a four inch long trough carved into it. What I'm going to do is fill full of the powder, ignite it from one end, see how long it takes to burn. We are now set on the floor of my garage, which is where we'll be doing the testing. And first up is the classic potassium 
base mixture and I just added way too much of that. Let's move that out of the way. And here we go. Beautiful. If I was using uh, Elemental Maker's Clap to Herp scale, I'd say that is definitely uh, full on Herp. Which, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd probably give it about a 9, considering factory made would obviously be better. But that's not too bad for some homebrew stuff. Now, for the sodium based mixture. Okay, pretty slow, left a lot more residue behind. I'd say that's a very mild case of the herp. He's using his scale and probably give that like a seven, maybe? I don't know, maybe closer to a six. Potassium and chlorine based oxidizer mixture. Come on, baby. Whoa! Okay, took a little bit to get uh, get going, but seemed just a little bit faster than the sodium-based. Calcium time. Come on. You know you want to. Come on. You got something going. Okay, I do have one of these torch windproof lighters. Maybe this may give us a more concentrated flame. We'll start from the other end. Actually, no, we won't. Start from over here again. It's trying to... but it can't sustain itself. That was the closest thing we got right there to a sustained reaction. This is... Well, that was a disappointment. This is one I'm definitely interested to see. This is the ammonium based oxidizer and charcoal mixture. Oh. And it blew the lighter out. Let's try the torch lighter. On the clap to herp scale, I'd say that's like the itch you get if you don't wash your balls well enough. As a last minute surprise guest, we have another black powder substitute. This is a 50-50 mixture of the potassium chlorine based oxidizer and sulfur. Here we go. Torch time. Nope. Ooh, this stuff smells pungent. It smells like a road flare. When you're researching this recipe, I did read. That burns rather slowly when it not 
contained inside of a firearm. So that's maybe... <laughs> oh my god, okay, I can't burn that. Oh! Stuff it. It's like one of those trick birthday candles. <laughs> it's still it's still going. Any more? Nope, it's done. Displayed on screen now are the results listed in shortest to longest burn time. The classic mixture with the potassium based oxidizer coming in first at 0.89 seconds. The potassium chlorine based oxidizer mixture coming at second, 1.3 seconds. The sodium based oxidizer mixture third with 2.13 seconds. It's important to note that for the last three, I have noted not applicable for the burn time due to the fact that they were burning intermittently and I had to constantly reignite them. The time to ignite on all of them is listed as the first time it reacted. The ammonium based oxidizer mixture, I couldn't really find a conclusive point at which it reacted. It sort of melted, didn't really react much. And then the total time is the time that either it stopped burning or I just called the experiment. Conclusions. There's a reason that the same recipe has been used for hundreds of years. The potassium-based oxidizer is cheap, and it's effective. What more could you ask for? The potassium chlorine-based oxidizer came in at a close second, and then the sodium-based oxidizer took more than twice the time. I am not a chemist. I couldn't tell you why this is. I'm sure someone out there knows. I would not be doing my due diligence if I didn't go over what I may have done wrong and what I may be able to do better if I were to perform this experiment the second time. First off, let's go over the recipes. The sodium-based oxidizer recipe, that was the same ratios as the potassium-based oxidizer recipe rather than being a stoichiometric ratio. The reason I did this is I read online that the same ratios could be used, although had I done it in a stoichiometric ratio the same way I did the calcium and the potassium chlorine based oxidizer mixtures, the results may have been different. Well, they would have been different because I'm changing a variable. The issue with the ammonium based oxidizer is that stuff is extremely hydroscopic. It absorbs water like nobody's business. It is highly likely that despite all of my efforts, my samples still had some water in it that probably affected the results. And I don't know how pure the oxidizer was that I started with. Honestly, I bought the cheapest stuff I could find on Amazon. Chances are, it wasn't pure, despite the fact I also did a recrystallization to try and purify it. Not all of them were ball milled for the same amount of time. is typically, give or take, like 15 minutes. So, it's not super exact there either. Two of the mixtures weren't actually alternate recipes for black powder. They were black powder substitutes. So, may, it may have not been a fair comparison, although I thought it would at least be interesting to have included those, and that's why I include them in the test. That's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something interesting. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, comment. Maybe I'll do some more of these chemistry videos in the future. I had a lot of fun. I know the format wasn't the best. I am new to try and doing this sort of format for the videos and it will improve over time. I do plan in the future to load these mixtures into some bullets and see how they go. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. Oh, stick around, thanks for watching.